Hi, I'm Oro with another Keyflame animation tutorial for Bryce. Now, this one's for advanced users because it involves a fair degree of video editing black magic. However, the main focus of this tutorial is to acquaint you with a common Bryce material concern. Now, this concern doesn't have a name as such, but it's to do with ray tracing and ray scattering when Bryce renders its fractal based materials. So I'm going to give it a formal name of pixel scintillation or informally shimmer. So here's the task. We have a desert like scene of a building. There's some kind of stone pylon in the foreground on the right. And what we want to do is set an establishing shot, a shot that tells people watching the video. Here's where the following action takes place. You are here. And all we want to do is start the camera high and jib down or, or lower the camera while looking at the building. So uh, just to give you some context, take a look at the, some areas of this building. Um, we really enjoyed making the texture for this one. We're looking for a burnished, uh, worn surface. Uh, it's slightly reflective, giving that uh, kind of plausible polished stone effect. And uh, just the way that we were working with the DTE, there were these great burnished and eroded streaks that appear through the building particularly I like this Y shaped streak through the side of the, side of the building and uh, there's a you know there's a little bit of bump going on there as are uh, as we have here in these uh, deep crevices so there's a lot of really cool qualities to this texture uh, just to give it a little more context how about this we a little bit closer here there's some cross hatching there's there's that Y thing going through there and it looks very old, looks weathered, as you'd expect to find something in the desert. So uh, we've got our little animation set up here. Uh, we, we start high, we end low. And when we play through this animation, uh, it looks like this. Wow, look at that. The building's been eaten alive by a whole lot of pixels. You can also see it's not just the building that seems to have come alive with ants. There are some details here uh, in the in the pylons that you can see shimmering away there. So, you've got to ask yourself, what's causing this? Well, the cause is Bryce's render engine. It's not a fault of it, it's just the way Bryce is built. Each frame is an independently rendered frame without context or reference to the frames uh, before or after it. Every pixel is fresh, new, and subject to effects like dithering or rounding, uh, lighting, camera position, and environmental effects. What's more, um, Shimmer is most noticeable in bump settings, so deep in the crevices here, or deep in those heavily eroded bits of the building. So uh, where your texture has to simulate depth or height, like sand erosion effects for instance, shimmer gets worse. Picture textures don't normally display shimmer unless you have a bump map uh, associated with the texture. So, how do you get around it? Well, the, uh, the simple answer is to turn your bump channel off, set it to zero, but of course you can lose a great deal of textural information that the scene needs. But for an establishing shot of this nature, there's another way out and that's by rendering out separated plates and compositing them in a scene with your video editor. Now here's where you need a video editing program and for you people who are hoping for a Bryce only solution I can only give you this to think about. Animation is never done with just one program. Your audience has levels of expectation now that demand you use a number of tools to complete your work. Uh, there are many video editors out there. Uh, I'm using uh, Final Cut Express, there's, there's iMovie, there's Windows Movie Maker, Sony Vegas, QuickTime Pro even. And for sound editors, I mean, we're just talking about the vision here. What about your sound? There's Audacity, that's freeware. Uh, there's Reaper, if you're looking for something a bit more sophisticated. Or GarageBand that comes with Apple computers. Or, or, or iLife Suite. So, uh, you have options there, and I do encourage you to learn how to use them. So feeling very uncomfortable about having my lovely building being devoured by ants or boiling or some, having the surface being boiled away I need a way to freeze the shimmer 
And the best way to do that is to freeze the movement. So here's where we get into the compositing and framing stuff. I am prepared to sacrifice a few things to get rid of the shimmer because I find the shimmer very distracting. It's telling a story that I really don't want to get into. I just want to say this is here, not the building has been eaten alive. So I'm going to start off by thinking about this scene in terms of layers that I can put in my video editing program. My first layer is going to be a background shot. And here it is. You can see black bars on the left and right of the shot now because this frame has been rendered at a slightly uh, distorted, shall we say, um, document size. And this is because what I want to do in the end is enlarge this picture so that we fill the whole frame. And that will give me room in my editing program to move this picture up and down without seeing the black uh, bars on the, on the left and right. And that will help me simulate uh, movement in the video editing program. Now why would I do this? Well the frame that I've rendered out, or rather the plate that I've rendered out, has very little shimmer. Here's the animation. I wanted to have some clouds moving in the background. But the camera is still. Even here you can still see some shimmer happening in the deep eroded bits of the, the image. It's reacting to the cloud light, it's reacting to you know, dithering, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. But when I enlarge it and move it, uh, that whole area of concern will be melted away. We're missing our foreground element, which is the pylons, so I rendered that out as a still frame against a blue background. Now this can be easily done in Bryce. It's just a matter of hiding your background images, turning off the atmosphere, and then setting a solid blue or, or a solid green color as your background. Again, this is being rendered out at a kind of oblong uh, ratio, just so I can move it out, stretch it out, and that will give me some top and tail room as I move this up and down. And because this is a foreground element to help preserve that illusion of movement, this foreground element will be moving faster down than the background element. Finally, just to bring it all together, I'm going to render out something in uh, Bryce for uh, a little bit of a sandstorm. Now what I did here was create a volumetric slab, place the camera within the volumetric slab, and then animated the material as it uh, blew through. So it looks like this. Very easy. What's more, now that I've got this texture, I can use the sand blowing effect again and again in different ways. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, superimpose this using uh, a particular calculation method and make it look like there is sand blowing in the uh, final creation of the scene. So in knitting these elements together, we have our chroma keyed pylons in the foreground. We have sand in the background. You can sort of see the sand just fading in through the, through the background there. And we have our background plate. You can also see that in the foreground, the, the pylon here has been blurred out a little. That's something that's done within the editing program. Maybe your editing program can do this, maybe it can't. But I far prefer to blur it uh, in the editing program where I have a degree of control of how much blur I have. I could blur it out in Bryce, but the rendering takes forever. So the final shot looks like this. So as you can see, the only shimmer available to us is going in the background of the sand blowing through. In other words, it makes it look natural. You'd expect sand to affect the building in some way. There's no shimmer whatsoever on the pylons as they go up because it's a still frame. And we still have some cloud movement against a soft starry background to give it that sense of atmosphere and fluidity.